Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and this video is going to be about setting up X-Plane to get the most out of it. So we are in the settings tab. We go up here to the upper right and there's three little slider looking things here. We click on that to get to our settings and on the generals tab you set your language etc. I'm not going to go over much about this and you can set the sound levels for the interior exterior cockpit and those things but the important thing is graphics this is what is going to affect your flight simulator the most how smoothly you fly and things like that so the first thing i recommend you do is go up here to data output and this very top row here, it says frame rate. We want to come over to here where it says show in cockpit. We're going to select that and say done. Now you'll notice it shows my frame rate up here. This is the one you want to look at. So right now I'm at 35 frames per second. That's not great, but it's good enough. If you are below or around 20, that is the absolute minimum you want to be at and you need to make some adjustments on your settings so again we come back over to settings and we're going to go to graphics again and now you want to move these sliders around and then come back and look at your frame rate you want to get the highest frame rate possible with these effects so i have a really good graphics card so I can push the graphics on this quite a bit and still get a pretty decent frame rate. Now I have three monitors, so that requires a lot more uh, writing of the, on the uh, screen, and that causes a drop in frame rate. So we want to start with visual effects. You put your little uh, pointer on this, and it's going to tell you what it affects. Increasing the slider will increase the quality of the visual effects. This primarily impacts your graphics card. So this is where you want to start. This is going to really hit your graphics, uh, your graphics a lot. Unless you have a very powerful graphics card, it needs to be set down pretty low. Texture quality. What does this one affect? We can take a look at this. Let's see. Graphics card and a lot of VRAM. So this takes a lot of graphics and and I aliasing well you can check the rest of them but go along and check those and now we have over here number of world objects and this is going to tell us that this impacts the CPU so you can have a very powerful CPU and crank this all the way up and it won't affect your graphics very much but if you have a weak graphics card well then these are going to be a problem so this is trial and error start by moving your graphics down low watching your frame rate and just keep bumping it up until you get a big hit and then back down a little bit and do that with each one of these sliders and then find the combination that you like best next let's look at the joystick or your yoke as you can see i have the alpha flight controller here and i can set the buttons i can view the left or the right and it'll show me the buttons that I can set now obviously you want to set each one of these up for what you use normally now this is great until you switch to another airplane and the control settings would all be different where you would like them to be different this is where you can create a new profile so you come down here and you can see I have several profiles for the airplane that I fly. So right now I'm Cessna 172, which I fly all the time. However, we can go to Manage Profiles, and it says here Create New Profile. And I can click on that. I don't want to go through all that, so I won't. But what you end up doing is reprogramming all the buttons and, and switches and knobs here for a new profile. So when you fly a particular airplane, then you can load that profile and what's nice is once you load it 
it'll remember that. So if I were to switch to uh, my 737, say, when I fly the 737, this one's going to show up all the time. When I fly that, it remembers which profile you use. So you only have to do this once for each airplane. And if you fly several different airplanes, this is the way to go. Set up each profile for each airplane. And on keyboard, you can do the same thing. You can select a profile or make a new one and reassign keys for whatever airplane you want to use or whatever keystrokes you want to use in any aircraft. And I think that's about it for the setup part. So let's look at some other features here that might be of interest to you. If you go to File, Save Flight, you can save a flight. So let's just say you're, you're practicing your landings somewhere. You can position yourself a mile or so at a certain altitude, ready to land, and then save that as a situation. And you want to save it as a situation, not a replay. And then you save that. Then what you can come do, then what you can do is come back and you can load that flight. And you can see I have a lot of flights here. And I use these when I'm making videos. So I can go back to that spot. If I make a mistake, I can always go back and, and pick up the video right there. So it comes in handy to have these saved situations they call them. So that's just one cool little feature. Another nice feature here is edit failures. And that's not your simulator failing, that's the aircraft. So when we open that we can decide that well we want a failure. We want the left magneto engine one fire we want this to fail at some time. So right now it's always working, which I think is a default for everything. But we can set this up to fail when you hit a button or a switch, fail at a speed or a time, or a mean time. So this is probably the easiest to do. You select a time, say you want, us, you want it to fail in 20 minutes. So you're going to lose track of that. That's what I like about this. So I'm flying along and I want to practice engine failures, but I don't want to just reach over and shut the controller off. I want it to happen when I'm not controlling the exact moment. And if you set this for 17 minutes or whatever it is into your flight, you're going to lose track of that as you're flying. And so that helps you deal with um, practicing failures and how do you respond in an emergency and you can set up all these different things to fail and that's really kind of cool. Another thing that could come in handy is these options here to reload current aircraft and the artwork, reload the aircraft not reloading the artwork and then reload the scenery so you can reload things separately and this might help you if you're if something crashes and you don't want to restart the simulator you can start by selecting reload aircraft and that's not going to take you back to an airport it's going to put you in that same spot unfortunately it's going to basically start your flight over so it'll show up as a new flight from that point but at least you won't crash and then there's one more thing I want to show you here and that's the map now I like their map and I don't like their map. What I don't like about the map is it's very small. But we have up here modes. We're, this is the VFR sectional chart, basically. And we have other options. We have the low IFR. So now you get to see airways. So these are Victor Airways. And we have high IFR. Now I don't do any IFR flying. So I don't use these at all, but these are the flights and the routes that you can use. But let's go back to the VFR, and here's something that I really like. So let's, here I am at KRDD Airport, and I'm over here parked. And I want to practice my landings, and I'm in a hurry. This is the lazy way, so I click on the airplane, 
and it's paused that's good so now I'm gonna crank up to 3,000 feet and put the speed at 120 125 and then I'm just gonna click on the airplane and drag it down here and then I can rotate it so it's pointing right at the runway and I can pick up the flight right there so if I close this out now and I mean this is since I have three monitors and I'm only using one I can't really show you this too well but let's see if I can just sneak up a little bit here and give you a view alright so there's the airport right down there so as you can see whoops that's my as you can see this is a nice little feature of the map you can move things around and this is actually pretty cool if you're practicing your landings and you just want to go back and start over and you don't want to fly around or you don't want to go to a situation just pick it up drag it and drop it so that's the fun things you can do with the map so that's it for setting up your simulator I hope you got some use out of this and that you play around with those settings and get the best frame rate you can get with your computer and enjoy your flying so thank you so much for watching if you like this click the like button if you want to leave a comment that would be great thanks again and god bless